Hello everybody, if there's a franchise I've mentioned once or twice before, it's Worms. Despite the latest Worms Rumble being bad and stupid, I'll always hold my Worm memories on the 2D and 3D games. We'll get to those later. Strategizing, customizing, and launching havoc for all these years. This is the Worms I'll always be glad to have grown up with. So because I'm in a Worms mood, I'm doing a Worms marathon. A Wormathon if you will. This is the Worms Marathon. Our story starts with a guy by the name of Eddie Davidson. You see, Eddie has been a big fan of Amiga since 1987, specifically the Amiga microcomputers. In 1990, work began on a project under the name Artillery using a casino graphing calculator as an experiment for his own amusement. Artillery was based on the previous tank games from the 8-bit era. Eventually, in August 1993, Davidson later moved development of artillery to the Amiga, which not only allowed him to introduce new elements not possible on the Casio graphic calculator, but it also allowed him for far better graphical style not possible on calculator. Davidson added worms as the playable characters and with inspiration from Amiga Format's Blitz basic programming competition, Davidson renamed his game from Artillery to Total Wormage. Yeah. Unfortunately, Total Wormage didn't win the competition. In fact, it didn't even reach any place for classification. Between you and me, it's probably because of that stupid name. I mean, Total Wormage? Really? So after a bunch of failed pitches to several publishers, Eddie showcased the game during ECTS in September 1994 where he and Team 17 co-founder Martin Brown made an offer on the spot to develop and publish Total Wormage. And the rest is history. The game's name became Worms and it was released on October 30, 1995. For this review, I'll be looking at Worms United, which not only has the original 1995 game, but it also has the reinforcement expansion pack 
on top of that, then after that, I'll also be taking a glance at the director's cut. And then it's Worms Open Warfare and it's Enhanced Put, which I'll be looking at that with Worms Collection. Okay, so after two logos for two companies, one defunct and the other still alive, we get <laughs> No that I've got your attention! Stop sniggering! Huh. I could stay here all night! Until I find out which one of you ones did it! <laughs> Worms. The computer game. <laughs> you see, this is why I don't like these designs. They look freaky. Unnatural demons from hell. Yeah, they may be more accurate to how worms look, but the body knows the unnecessary dark gray they sating, the eyes, the teeth. I'm sorry, they just look gross. There's a reason this is the only game with these design. So after that, you get to the title screen. Before that, let's choose a name for our team, more specifically, its members since I forgot to change the team name, but I'll eventually just use my name. You can also choose a voice, which is pretty much the most you can customize outside of the names. And we're off to challenge mode. Every time you start any mode, it plays a different cutscene. Every time. They don't even have any relation to what you do in mission. Now that I think about it, but as for the cutscenes themselves, aside from the fact the CG aids as well as cheats, they certainly provide a yeah, decent amount of entertainment. I just wish they were treated more like a reward for completing a mission as opposed to having them be given out like candy. That and you can just look them up on YouTube but that's besides the point. Every mission has you kill a number of worms with a condition, whether it be with all weapons, no bazooka, or only using a specific weapon like a Uzi. The controls are okay, but I feel my worms moves a bit too slow for my liking, to the point I sometimes end up hopping to places I want to go to. I also wish they had a jumping bellow. You jump with enter. Which I don't mind, but it's when I'm trying to get up that I have a problem. Whenever you jump, you f jump in a forward arc, like Crash Bandicoot, except you don't spin around. I don't like it because it's incredibly finicky. Most of the time, if I want to reach a higher platform or go back where I accidentally hopped off, there's usually a very high risk that I straight up won't make it. I wish there was some kind of backflip you could use like some of the later Worms games. Not only would it fix this problem, but it also makes things a lot easier. Might as well talk about the weapons. The bazooka, probably the one I use the most, it's great for far away enemies and it delivers big impact, although it can be also affected by wind. Homing Missile. You get to click on the worm and to shoot away. The only reason I use bazooka more is because unlike the bazooka, the homing missile has a limited amount of ammo. And another reason is because sometimes it straight up misses when it shouldn't have to. Like there isn't anything blocking from getting the worm I aimed for, yet somehow, I missed. The grenade which I barely used, the shotgun which I also barely used, the Uzi which while it doesn't allow you as much shots as the shotgun it makes up for it by firing lots of bullets, the fire punch good for pushing worms off the map, Dragon Ball, <laughs> a 
a worse version of fire punch dynamite which you can actually kind of aim with this game and unlike later entries you don't drop it you throw it so i like getting creative with this mine which is like the dynamite when you can't throw it you drop it air strike has you target a worm with a bunch of missiles from a plane it's good, but similarly to the homing missile, sometimes it straight up goes for the wrong worm nearby the one you targeted. Teleport moves you to another part of the map at the cost of a round. It's okay, but sometimes the enemies like using it too much. Blowtorch, great for getting closer to enemies and getting back up what you accidentally walked off but it's only really used for those two scenarios and i otherwise barely used it pneumatic drill it's like the blowtorch but it goes down you can only really use this on a worm nothing else so i use this even less times than the blowtorch ninja rope helps you swing around places you need to go but I didn't even use it in this game. Now that I think about it, there are weapons you won't use because either the game won't let you or there are straight up better weapons to use. That may seem good for some being a part of the strategy, and it is to some degree, but I also think the weapon library is just plain unbalanced. Maybe if they either added more weapons or made the already available weapons more balanced, I'll definitely agree. In these challenges, you can face anybody from James Brown, Chris Evans, to the Star Trek cast. I don't get it. Why are they here? What's the point? It it's cute, I guess, but why? This is also a good time to mention. James Brown kicked my butt in worm, so why is the difficulty so annoyingly inconsistent? In one instance, you could be acing it. But in another instance, the opponent destroys you. Suck on this. It also doesn't help how the physics can sometimes be straight up ridiculous. Like, look at that. That's what that you get me? when you mess with I me. I wasn't even close. All that to say, after a while, I dropped the challenge mode. Either it was too frustrating or it became too boring. Those are the two reasons you most likely stop challenge mode. There's also Balo which you can play against three other CPU teams. I ended up having more fun here due to the fact that it was a frustrating, quite frankly, with the amount of available weapons. This is pure worm's mayhem, and I like it. So overall, the first game isn't too savvy, but it definitely aids. And two years later, an expansion pack for the Amiga version came out. It's Worms Director's Cut. Wouldn't it make more sense to say Developer's Cut? Well, anyway, unlike the DOS version, you can't change the voice. Bummer. But I'll make a lot by choosing the names. Nacho, <laughs> Joseph, Pingas, <laughs> and Sam Hex. On top of being made with a new, improved engine, the game looks significantly better, and there's new added weapons, which allow for a much more frantic experience, with all the good going with it. Surely must be the best version, right? Eh. Aside from only being able to choose one voice, the cutscenes are also gone along with the challenge mode. My gripes with how it was handled in the original Hello. aside, they really could have taken the opportunity to try and overhaul and improve it. Instead, the mode is straight up working, and that's a bummer. Honestly, there isn't one that's better than the other. Or 
though I will give this to the director's cut. You can't do this. But 11 years is a long time, so did they improve themselves or did they blunder themselves? So right off the bat, if this is supposed to be a remake of the first game, why do they also feel the need to remake the cutscenes from the second game? I mean, it makes no sense. Could they, they have saved remaking Worms 2's cutscenes for Worms Open Warfare 2? In fact, why wasn't that one a remake of Worms 2? But anyway, it's mm -hmm. not like if there were very few cuts in the, the first game. No, there were mm. plenty they could have remade mm. instead of just two. Why Worms 1 cutscenes are funnier than the original? The Worms 2 cutscenes are a bit of a different story altogether. And the fact that the majority of Open Warfare's cutscenes are Worms 2's cutscenes is a really big problem. Simply put, they aren't as funny or endearing, often having changes that make them way worse in my opinion. Also, this is a me thing, but why are only the Worms cell seated and nothing else? It makes them look like peanut butter in the cereal. They stick out like a sore thumb. Before I start the game, hmm. I might as well create a team. So just like the original, the game has a challenge mode. Unlike the original, the game forces you to do a tutorial. Lame. The challenges here are nothing like the ones from the original worms. In fact, I don't even think they have any variations. The controls are so much better than the original. They even got rid of the thing where if you were close to get a full damage, your worm would almost lose balance and go. It's cute at first, but got pretty annoying, so I'm glad they got rid of it. I can't say the same thing for the use of CG in the graphics. Don't get me wrong, the game looks really good, but the CG is not only obvious, but it can be distracting, especially on the map. I also wish the worms were made a lot more impressive. What happened to the big bulgy eyes they had when you either died or they became a piece of I miss that. Sure they grin when you get a hit, but that's not enough. I also wish they kept the weapons from the director's cut. Reinforcements have arrived! I may have fun with the ninja room, but it's certainly no remake. But the weapons are available on the game and you will manage from a certain point of view. But I'll get more really? to that later. A problem I had with the game is that the CPU components are so slow and they take way too long. What's this? You just stand there like a dog thinking about what to do. Yeah, the original, the enemies were eating drugs or being stupid, but at least it's the original, they didn't take forever. Come on, I have to listen to me.
I said the physics can sometimes be complete whack? Well, in this game, it's borderline silly. Like, look here. How is a Uzi first to the face not good enough when a Uzi can draw away good enough to do the trick? Folks are wrong. Oh, so this might be just a me thing, but how come well, when I roll one dies, the number C word doesn't so? It's kind of sorry. To be honest, multiplayer and challenge mode really don't feel that different, seeing as how there's no variety in challenge mode, which the original game had plenty of. Yeah, it was either frustrating or scale up too easy, but it at least had enough variety for me to not to feel that challenge and multiplayer felt the same. To be fair though, maybe I should have played with someone else, but my point still stands. Yikes, what a mess for a remake. On its own, it's an okay if not boring game with a great soundtrack, but as a remake, it has so many questionable quirks that I honestly can't say it's the best version. A year later, an enhanced port of Worms Open Warfare came out, simply known as Worms 2007. It released on Xbox Live, the PlayStation Store, and the iPhone iOS. The version I'll be playing sold up on the Worms Collection. PS, it's the PS3 version. What we have here is essentially an even more butchered version of oh, yeah, Open Warfare. Not only are the cutscenes not present, but the music in game is also absent. It's on the What's title that? screen, but it's pure silence on the battlefield. There's not even any ambience like the 1995 What's original. That? It's just pure silence, and those silence can make for a pretty <laughs> awkward time. Not much to say about the gameplay since it's pretty much an even more butchered open warfare, except I cannot emphasize that enough. I'll be honest, my time in multiplayer was a lot better here than in open warfare. It's a lot yes, of fun in the multiplayer, even if it can feel awkward without the music. Another thing to mention is that some of the maps are color, which makes it look really good at times, and it unfortunately often looks like a lazily placed PNG. The physics in the game are alright, but not great, also good enough. Although it does have its own small moments of Bolsovac here and there. Worms 2007 is only really fun to with friends because otherwise it's even more of a mess than open warfare. Well that does it for my Worms Marathon, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time for Worms 2, assuming I can get it working. Mm. Well anyway, this was Joseph from Joseph's World and... Oh hey, your holy grenade. <laughs>